Hello, hello, hello. Yes, it is another week and I'm glad to welcome you to the Airport Safety Channel. I am your host, Isaac Otu, and it is a privilege for me to take you through this week's presentation. How do you know your airport facility? We are looking at parts of a runway and we are using Annex 14 Volume 1 Aerodromes, the ninth edition, currently in Chapter 3 and the topic is stop ways. Previously, I introduced you to what a stopway is, but today we will be going deeper into the identification and the purpose and also inspection of a stopway. Remember that IKEL makes it clear that the inclusion of a stopway does not necessarily imply that stopway must be provided at all times. A stopway is usually located right after the threshold of the runway and forms part of the runway within the strip, within the strip. For a stopway. Now the runway length is the takeoff run required or the landing distance required, whichever is greater. That serves as the basic length of the runway. However, for a runway being used for takeoff, if the accelerate stop distance required is greater than the length so determined, then the excess may be provided as stopway and it's usually at the end of each runway. What do I mean by that? Takeoff really will be from threshold to threshold. That will be the takeoff run available. But if in the process of the takeoff and there is a need to abort at V1, then the distance or the remaining pavement of the takeoff run is declared as the accelerate stop distance. If the pilot can stop before the end of the remaining takeoff run, then there is no need for a stopway. But if the pilot requires more pavement to stop beyond the takeoff run available, then the extra pavement required for that stopping process is called a stopway. It's called a stopway. Okay, so let's look at the figure on the screen. On figure A above, you will observe that it has a displaced threshold. This area adds up to the takeoff run available for the aircraft on your screen. Therefore, if there is a need to abort takeoff, the aircraft has more pavement available to complete the, take, uh, the abort takeoff without any challenge. However, if you look at figure B below, the distance from threshold to threshold serves as the takeoff run available, which makes it shorter for the aircraft below to either take off or land. It also makes it shorter for the aircraft below to stop if there is an aborted takeoff. Therefore, the area on a displaced threshold will be used as a stopway. This will facilitate any attempt to abort takeoff without causing secondary damage to the aircraft. So, another consideration to look out for when deciding to provide a stopway or a clearway as an alternative to an increased length of runway will depend on the physical characteristics of the area beyond the end of the runway. Now, if you look at this runway, when aircraft is taken off from 36 towards 18, the threshold at 18 is virtually at the end of the runway. Now, assume that a temporary obstacle suddenly builds up at this end, it means that the threshold needs to be moved further 
making the runway shorter. In this case, for aircraft to take off, they will take off earlier, but during an abandoned takeoff, a stopway will have to be added when reducing the length of the runway to ensure that aircraft can still take off or abort takeoff as required. So, when you are inspecting the condition of a stopway, it is important that paved stopways must be clear of debris, which may cause damage to aircraft engine. Debris such as stones and other forms of debris may be, must be swept regularly to ensure that the runway and the stopway are equally clean. Also, the surface friction of stopways must be monitored and maintained close to that of the runway as much as possible. Spillage and other conditions that reduce the quality of the pavement must also be avoided. Remember that whether paved or unpaved, all conditions applicable to the runway are also applied to the stopway unless otherwise stated or recommended by the Annex 14. Thank you for making it this far and our bullet for today is the definition for helicopter. An helicopter is a heavier than air aircraft supported in flight chiefly by the reactions of the air on one or more power driven rotors or substantially vertical axis. Note some states use the term rotorcraft as an alternative to helicopter. Thank you for watching. Post your comments and questions. Subscribe and click the bell. Share with one and all. Thank you.